Hi, my name is Deja, and on today's episode of Unveiling Physics, we're going to talk about the ice cube experiment. I can't do this, it's too cold. Much better. Hello everyone, my name is Deja, and today we're going to talk about the Ice Cube Neutrino Observatory. Ice Cube is the first detector of its kind. It's designed to observe the cosmos from deep within the South Pole ice. An international group of scientists responsible for the scientific research makes up the Ice Cube collaboration. Encompassing a cubic kilometer of ice, Ice Cube searches for nearly massless subatomic particles called neutrinos. These high-energy astronomical messengers provide information to probe even the most violent astrophysical sources. Events like exploding stars, gamma ray bursts, and even cataclysmic events like black holes or neutron stars. You may be wondering, what are neutrinos? Neutrinos are invisible, nearly massless subatomic particles that are electrically neutral. They can travel from the deepest parts of the universe without being deflected by magnetic fields or absorbed by matter. They travel in a straight line. This makes them excellent messengers about information of events or objects in which they originate. Neutrinos originate from some of the most violent environments in the whole universe. Events like supernovae and objects like active galactic nuclei and black holes are just a few of the possible sources of these high energy neutrinos. Other than the particle of light called photons, neutrinos are the second most abundant particles in the entire universe. So what are we hoping to find? IceCube detects the light emitted by charged particles that are produced when a single neutrino interacts with a proton or neutron of an atom. The resulting nuclear reaction from these secondary particles traveling at very high speeds, faster than the speed of light in ice, give off a blue light called Cherenkov radiation. The neutrinos we detect are like fingerprints that allows us to gather information about the mysteries and unknown sources of the universe. So why build ice cube at the South Pole? In order to see the light emitted by these secondary particles from neutrino interactions, we need a large volume of transparent material. That basically meant water or ice. Because these interactions are rare and produce light that can extend over a kilometer, Ice Cube needs a lot of ice atoms to even see one single event. The South Pole is the only place on Earth that holds such large quantities of clear, pure, and stable ice, but also has the infrastructure to support scientific research. Most ice contains air bubbles that would distort Ice Cube measurements, but the South Pole's ice sheet is very thick and tightly compressed. Over time, ice and snow has piled on top, compressing down all the layers. This created enough pressure to blow out all the air bubbles, making the deep ice ultra-transparent. So let's go now through some rounds of ice cube quick facts. Let's start with science. About 100 trillion neutrinos are passing your body each second. You would have to wait 100 years for a neutrino to interact with a detector the size of a human. IceCube is designed to detect particles coming from cataclysmic events that have energies a million times greater than nuclear reactions. Every day, 275 million cosmic rays are detected by IceCube. But also, IceCube detects 275 atmospheric muons daily. That is about 100,000 per year. About 350 scientists, myself included, from 58 institutions at 14 different countries conduct IceCube research. One terabyte of unfiltered data is collected daily at IceCube, and about 100 gigabytes is sent over satellite for analysis. Let's talk about the detector now. The IceCube detector is one cubic kilometer of ice. That's enough water to fill up 1 million swimming pools. IceCube is comprised of 86 cables, and each cable holds 60 digital optical modules, otherwise known as DOMs. 
Each of the 86 cables has a theme, and each DOM has a name that represents that theme. Some of my favorite DOM names are Wolverine, Orchid, Tortellini, and Heliophobia. Which name would you pick for our next DOMs? The 5160 in eyes DOMs contain sensitive light detectors, otherwise known as photomultiplier tubes. They also hold mini computers that relay data all the way back to the surface. An additional 324 DOMs make up the IceCube iStop, which is a surface array dedicated for cosmic ray science. DOMs are attached to a cable at depths about 1,450 meters, extending all the way down to 2,450 meters. IceCube is frozen in optically clear ice that is very stable. The South Pole ice sheet moves about 10 meters every year as a single piece. All right, let's talk about construction. It took seven years for IceCube to be completed from the years 2004 to 2010. Construction activities could only take place for a few months each year during the Southern Hemisphere summers, roughly from November till February. The average time to drill a hole in the ice takes about 48 hours, with the very first hole taking 57 hours. On average, 4,800 gallons, that is 18,169 liters of fuel, was used to drill each of the holes at IceCube. About 200,000 gallons, that's more than 750 liters of water, is melted per hole during drilling. The average time to deploy a cable with all the DOMs takes about 11 hours. The hot water hose used for drilling weighs about 25,000 pounds. So how about we wrap up all this knowledge with a few of the things that you might like to know or that you didn't know about IceCube. 5,397 of the 5,424 of the deployed DOMs are still actively operational collecting data. That means that less than 1% have failed ever since deployment and been frozen in the ice. Based on the high reliability observed, IceCube could be working on 95% of its sensors even 50 years from now. Think about all the science we can do. Each DOM detects individual photons and collects data for a period of about one second before sending it all the way up to the ICL or the IceCube lab. The Data Acquisition System, or DAQ, looks for patterns of hit in the detector that could have been created by a particle. In essence, light arriving at nearby sensors within a short amount of time. These triggers will then be combined into what we call an IceCube event. Every year, IceCube adds new data filters to potentially identify interesting events, such as very high energy neutrinos or even theorized exotic particles like magnetic monopoles. IceCube is always innovating and upgrading to ensure the future of science exploration. So stay tuned to see what we discover next. Until next time, bye.